Hi everyone and welcome back to the 4Play channel. I'm Bella. I'm Jace. Real quick before we jump into this video, if you guys are planning on going to Bliss Cruise or a Temptation Cruise, we would really, really appreciate if you use our link. We'll have it right here. We'll also have it linked down below in the description. But if you book through us, it doesn't cost anything extra, but it really helps us out. It helps the channel support the podcast and everything else we're doing. And we would love to meet you guys. And we love Bliss and Temptation so much. We're going to do some separate activities, some little meetups, some just fun games and type things like that. Just for the people who use our link so yeah so make sure to click the link below and book it's gonna be so fun all right so now let's jump into the video <laughs> is going to be all about swinger cruises and which cruise is best for you a temptation cruise or bliss cruise those two cruises are the most popular swinger friendly or lifestyle friendly yes. cruises they're not just swinger cruises so it's really just an adults only cruise that has spicy and sexy things available we're also going to talk more about the cruises that go out of america there is other ones overseas that we have never been on, but this is gonna be the American Temptation and Bliss Cruise, is the ones that we're gonna be comparing in this video. One of the biggest questions we get asked is, what is the demographic like? And so on Bliss Cruise, you're going to skew a little bit of an older crowd. You're going to find a majority more probably 40s into 60s. And on Temptation Cruise, you're going to get a wider range, but there are a lot more people who are in their late 30s down to 21. You do have to be 21 to go on both of these cruises. But you are going to find a large range of demographic on every single ship, but as a general rule, Temptation seems to skew a little bit younger while Bliss seems to skew a little bit older. We also think that the demographic that is older on the Temptation Cruise feels more young at heart because it's more of a party ship, more of a party vibe on Temptation versus Bliss is also a party but more relaxing as well. One of the biggest differences on these ships is at Temptation there is singles, that's single males and single females. Whereas on Bliss, it is only couples, or if you're there with like a throuple, there could be three of you, but that's gonna be the biggest difference in demographic wise is the singles versus only couples. Duration wise, Temptation is, or has typically been five days or five nights and six days. And Bliss Cruise in April, they'd have an April one and a November one, and Temptation only has one a year. The April one is usually five nights, and the November one is typically six to seven nights. So the size of the ship is obviously gonna vary every single year. So if you wanna know specific numbers for that year, just look up whatever ship it's gonna be on. Temptation does ships that are a little bit smaller, where Bliss, at least in November, normally does a little bit bigger ships and their April ships tend to be a little bit smaller. In the past, the ones that we've been on, Temptation had about 2,000 passengers and Bliss Cruise had about up to 4,000 passengers. But again, it all depends, and that's Bliss November. It all depends on whichever ship that is. So whenever you see what ship it is, just look up the occupancy and then you'll see it there. But typically Temptation is a smaller ship. Bliss November is a bigger ship. Bliss April is usually the same size as Temptation Cruise. Regarding how the ship is organized, a big difference you're gonna notice is Temptation only has one playroom generally. It's not near as big. Last year there was 22 beds in it, so it's still decent size but not huge. Bliss Cruise has a huge, huge playroom. I think this had 150 beds last year. There's a second playroom that's a little bit smaller but indoors, and then Bliss also has a dungeon. So there's definitely more play areas on Bliss. And again, we're talking about Bliss November. Throughout this entire video, we are comparing November Bliss to February Temptation. It does make sense that Temptation does have a smaller play area because it is a much smaller ship. So that's probably where you're gonna have a little bit more play areas on Bliss. This kind of goes into the size of the ship, but uh, in general, how the ship is organized, we do feel like the smaller the ship it is, it's a lot easier to find people because most of the people are going to be at the same party, at the same place, there's not as many pool so there's not as many options so you'll see the same people over and over more in one place versus where bliss there was a lot more places to be a lot more options a lot more different clubs a lot of different pools more hot tubs that kind of thing and so because there was more people more options it was harder to find the same people so on bliss at the end of the cruise we would see people we never even saw on the first day yeah. or even throughout the cruise it was like that with temptation too but on bliss it was even like crazier so for themes they both are gonna have the same type of general themes. 
People usually go pretty all out on both of these ships. I would say women go a little bit more out, all out than men, but men still, a lot of men dress up and really do go all out as well. One difference though is that Temptation has daytime pool parties that also have themes, which is kind of fun. So you have your daytime theme whenever you're on the boat all day and you're not getting off on an island. And then at night, you just have your regular theme. Some examples of theme nights would be glow night. That was on both of them. Lingerie night. I believe that was on both of them. During the day, Temptation had a pink flamingo pool party. There was a midsummer night's dream theme. There's a fetish theme. So there's lots of different themes. A lot of people I'm sure want to know about the food situation. So the food is just what is on the typical ship. They're not going to have different food because it's a chartered ship. Uh, they do usually have special cakes and things yeah. that are... We'll put a picture in. On Temptation, they had these watermelons that were carved all sexy. And so, but in general, the food is the same. Food is included in your admission price. So there's some restaurants that are included and there are some specialty restaurants that you can pay in addition. We found the food quality to be amazing on both. Usually these cruises are either on a celebrity ship or a Royal Caribbean ship. Royal Caribbean owns celebrity and celebrity is just a little bit more higher tiered. And so we find that celebrity had a bit of better food in our opinion, but depending on the cruise ship is going to dictate what the food is like. A Accommodations wise, you're also gonna find a very similar thing. Whether it's on Royal or on Celebrity, you're gonna have really nice rooms, really nice accommodations. So you can go to the website and kind of see what the rooms look like, but they're both gonna be really, really nice. Celebrity tends to be a little bit nicer because it's a, like Bella said, it's a higher tier, but both are gonna be very comfortable and every single room is really, really nice on all of the ships. Let's go into talking about the activities that are offered on both of the ships. On Temptation, they had people called Playmakers. So they had these people that worked with Temptation who was always dancing, think of like go-go dancing. And so I feel like it was higher energy and it made yes. people want to go and dance more whereas bliss didn't have that the playmakers also started games and there was a lot more pool games things like that versus bliss they only did pool games one time it was one day that they did like a ton of them but on temptation it was more throughout the entire cruise we felt like the playmakers made an absolutely huge difference because that really got people talking and got everyone involved so it made it much easier to make friends and make connections that way. So that was a huge plus in our opinion for Temptation Cruise. If you've ever been on a vanilla cruise ship, you know the pool games that they'll have there. Imagine that, but a sexier version. So that's what they would do for the activities on these ships. On Bliss Cruise, they also had karaoke and they didn't have karaoke on Temptation. So the karaoke was pretty fun to be able to watch everybody sing. There are seminars on both ships as well. And Bliss had these self-led meetups and that was all listed on the Cruise Compass so the brochure that was sent out every single day, you saw different meetups that they had. Some examples of those were 55 and up meetup, full swap meetup, saw swap meetup, just a ton of different meetups to kind of find like-minded people. Temptation did have some, but not near as many as Bliss. Show-wise, we personally both thought Temptation did a better job. They Both of them are gonna have the normal celebrity and Royal Caribbean shows that just the dancers and singers put on. They also, one of the other overlapping things was they both had adult comedians that did more lifestyle jokes and just adult jokes in general. But Temptation had a couple different shows that were all adult that were incredible. They had a show called Erotic, which was almost like a burlesque slash Magic Mike type show that was just absolutely incredible. And they also did a show that was an adult game show. And they did all sorts of fun things where it was, hey, someone find a erection enhancer and bring it up the front and you'll get points. And that game was really, really fun and everyone was so into it. If you've ever been on a vanilla cruise, you know the Quest game show, that scab, it was like that, but imagine the playmakers putting it on and it was all sexy stuff. The music was overall pretty much the same when it comes to the night party that everyone goes to. There was, one of the DJs was the same, DJ LP. She was on both cruises that we went on. We found that there was more EDM 
them than we would have preferred. We like whenever there's more a mix. So there's EDM and top 40. Yeah, some rap. And I feel like when there's more of that kind of music, you can get closer with people and like grind on them versus EDM music, which we love. It's more like shuffling and kind of like fist pumping. But on Bliss, because there were so many different areas and different clubs, they also had a Latin club. They had a different club that was playing more of that hip hop. But most of the people were at the same party anyway. So although Bliss did have more options, it ended up everybody was at the same place where the EDM was playing. This kind of goes into shows kind of, but they did have live music in areas too. You would just look at your compass or cruise compass brochure for the day and you can find where there was a piano player or uh, other people doing live music. Those were the people who were hired from the celebrity or royal ship. Usually they weren't outside people coming in, except for on Temptation, there was one piano player that they brought in as a third party and she, played music that was more sexy. She kind of changed all the lyrics, so that was really fun. Port and excursion wise, they're pretty much gonna be the same on both ships. It's gonna stop at places like Cozumel and just some of the Caribbean islands. There is adult only excursions on both that have a little bit more sexy feel, maybe some that you can be topless on, but those are both on both ships as well. So excursion wise, pretty much the same exact thing. And those excursions would be like the dolphin encounter or go to a beach or whatever that is. The ones that they would put on from the ship. Some of the things didn't really fit into a category that we thought were important to talk about. So we're gonna label it as miscellaneous. One thing is that Bliss is fully nude so you can be topless and bottomless where Temptation is only topless. And you could only be topless or nude when you were at sea and not at port. You couldn't just be topless everywhere and it was only in selected areas, so which really was only on the pool deck or like outside. There was a day on both ships where we were at one of the islands that Royal Caribbean owned and we were the only boat there. So on both of those, when you were at port and when you were out on the beach, you could be topless. But that was because we were on a Royal Island and there was no other boats in port that day. One of the biggest differences is that Temptation includes the drink package. That was just a really fun added on feature. It's included in your room price and it doesn't really bump up the price of the room at all. So that's a big difference. And there really wasn't too much of a line. I mean, it was pretty easy. Yes, if you had a really busy bar at a busy time, it took a while to get a drink, but there was so many bars that it was always easy to go find a drink. So big plus for Temptations, it did include the drink package. And when he says drink package, it means the alcohol package. Mm -hmm. So there is a, an alcohol plus package that has top tier alcohol. So this is like the normal, alcohol drink package that's included. And it was really nice being able to go and not have to worry at all about anything costing extra. And it was cool when everybody had the drink package as well. Bliss does have a drink package, but it is just at an additional cost. As a general rule, Temptation Cruise is also cheaper than Bliss Cruise. The base room price of Temptation is quite a bit cheaper than Bliss Cruise is. And that is with the drink package included. You also have to take into consideration that Bliss is a little bit longer Longer, whereas Temptation is a little bit shorter. When you bring in that drink package though, that does make a big difference there, I feel like, because if you were to, although Bliss is already more expensive, and if you want the drink package, which is an extra additional, you have to get the drink package for everyone in your group. You can't just get one person get the drink package and the other one doesn't. You're not gonna trick them that way. So the price is a big, big difference. On Bliss, per stateroom, you have to get two drink packages unless you have some medical exception, which I don't think is the easiest to get from our understanding. The staff is amazing on both of them. There is no difference there. They have amazing staff. Make sure that you are treating them well because they treat you literally like royalty. Yeah, that goes for any cruise you're ever going to pee on. The staff are the most hardworking, kind, wonderful people. So you have no worries there and they are very utmost with discretion. And so it is a really, really great staff on both ships. The staff that they also bring on, so there it's the staff for the cruise ship itself who are always on the cruise ship. And then there are the people who are brought on for the charters, the ones who are like volunteering. Both of those amazing as well. And in the play areas, the staff from the ship cannot go into those. So the people who are volunteering, who are working, with Temptation or Bliss, of course they can go in because they're working it, but the people who are typically working on Celebrity Royal Caribbean itself, they are not allowed in those areas. So in conclusion, Bliss seems to be a little bit more of a relaxed ship that definitely still has a party all the time. So you definitely can party all the time, but as a general rule, it's a little bit more relaxed. 
Whereas Temptation also has areas you can relax, but it seems to be more of a party all the time. Another one of the big differences, kind of like we said earlier, Temptation does skew a little bit younger, where Bliss skews a little bit older. They are both gonna overlap. As a general rule, the demographic kind of falls that way. Other biggest differences is that singles are allowed on Temptation, not allowed on Bliss. Bliss is fully nude if you want to be. It's, it's completely clothing optional, and Temptation is topless optional only, and then the price. Those are the biggest, biggest differences. Mm -hmm. We cannot more highly recommend either one of these cruises. We are planning on going to both of them, the November Bliss every year and Temptation every single year. We're already booked a couple years out for both of them. So we absolutely love both of them. I think that in a perfect world, going to both of them is the most ideal thing. But if you can only go to one, hopefully this video kind of helped you figure out which one would be a little bit better for you. They're both an absolutely amazing time. And make sure if you guys wanna go, if you guys will book through our link, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it really does help us out and it helps out the channel. And so we'll have the link right here. We'll also have it in our events page as well. And we'll link that below. For the people who do book through us, we're going to have some separate activities, separate meetups, and we're really excited. If you guys have any questions or comments about anything, make sure to leave them below. Make sure to like the video, subscribe. It really, really helps us out. And we will see you guys in the next one. Bye.